This week's snooker mystery is can you play snooker with the North Pole? I've stuck a tip on the end and I'll take the sign off and let's see what happens. Whether you can or not shows something you really need to consider before buying any cue. But you're probably wondering how did I manage to get my hands on the northern pole of planet Earth? Well that involved a long journey through the snow, into darkness and the blizzard conditions of a northern winter. Guided only by the northern lights I managed to eventually find my way to the top of the earth, but after such a long journey would I still have the strength required to wrestle the pole free of the snow? Just. Now as you can see with this compass, this is the magnetic north pole because anywhere I move it the needle points right at the pole. Although I hope moving the earth's magnetic north pole doesn't cause any problems. Nah, I'm sure it's fine. Let's see how it works as a snooker cue then. To start off with, I think this thing looks amazing. The lines on it create this weird hypnotic effect when you're playing a shot, and it actually works as a cue. You can chalk it in everything. It's also not too bad to play with. I thought the North Pole would be incredibly heavy, but this is only just a little bit heavier than a regular snooker cue, so pretty good. But of course, when you try something new like this, it's unlikely to work perfectly. Annoyingly, because the shaft of the cue is so wide, you can't actually play screw shots. The best you can do is that. But that causes other problems as well. Because the end is so wide, I can't actually see the tip when I go to play a shot. And that makes playing complex shots almost impossible. In fact, that means playing easy shots are pretty tough as well. I've nearly solved this problem, however, by drawing a line at the top that leads to the tip. This works most of the time, but isn't a complete fix. But this is where it gets fascinating, because that's not the only reason it doesn't work. Because it doesn't do something that a normal cue ordinarily would. But before that, we're going to find Yanni, who's from Jyväskylä, Finland, which is the closest common I had to Lapland. This is my regular cue that I use all the time. It's perfectly designed to play accurate snooker shots. But crucially, did you notice it gets narrower towards the tip end? Hopefully you did because this is fairly obvious. And this is vital not just because it allows you to play a shot with any spin you choose and you can clearly see the tip end, but it actually creates a specific effect that allows me to play the shot straighter and more accurately. As it turns out, there's a problem with the North Pole that makes it difficult to cue straight, but what is it? But the fact that I can't see where the tip is when I go to play the shot isn't the real problem. The problem isn't that the cues are way too short either, or that it's nowhere near straight, or even that it's very, very sticky when you go to play the shot. None of these things really compare to this. You see, whenever you play a shot with a normal cue, it does this a bit and flexes. You can clearly see in slow motion as the tip strikes the right side of the cue ball here how the cue begins to wobble and flex. And bizarrely it's this flex that allows me to play shots even with side spin in a very controlled way. Whereas the North Pole on the other hand has no flex or give to it whatsoever. But why does any of this matter? Well, what I'm about to show you is the main difference between a bad cue and a good cue. Watch what happens here when the tip of the North Pole strikes the side of the cue ball. That isn't a miscue, I've struck that clean, but what happened? Well, luckily, I can show you, because I have a really simple, although maybe not that accurate way, of testing how good a cue is. You need to place the white on the brown spot and the red in the centre of the top cushion. You then aim to hit the red exactly full, at very nearly full power, but before you strike the cue ball, you move your cue over to the side of the white. I still hit the red and unbelievably potted it, but unfortunately, I wasn't filming the pocket. Now if you compare that to this, the £10 bar cue I used in the cheap cue challenge, there's a link to that video in the card up there, and then it gives a very different result. I'm trying to do exactly the same thing again here and look what happens. I actually didn't notice at the time how much of a problem the lack of flex in this cue made when I was trying to make that 100 break on the lineup. 
Obviously I realised at the time that it wasn't as easy to play with this £10 bar cube, but I didn't really think about why. It's only now I can see exactly what was magnifying the unwanted side spin. But neither of them compare to the North Pole. Now this isn't exactly going to be a fair test because I'm not going to be able to strike the cue ball as hard with this thing as I could with a snooker cube. And I'm not going to risk hitting it as close to the edge as I can because it will probably just miss cue. What you're about to see is a shot that's played without a miss cue and watch how far over the cue ball goes. Remember this is just a basic test but it gives you a good idea of the sort of cue you want to avoid. So if the bar cue's challenging to play with and it's only that far out, just imagine how difficult it's going to be to play properly with the North Pole. Believe it or not, all of that was caused by the lack of flex, but that's not the only effect the stiffness of the North Pole actually has on the ball. I can't say for certain that the give in a snooker cue increases the contact time between tip and object ball. But it definitely seems to soften the blow and it allows you to put all types of spin on the cue ball without it deflecting away too much. And without it you can't get your tip to grip the cue ball anywhere near as much and produce any spin at all really. It's certainly true that something as stiff as the North Pole won't be much use as a snooker cue. However, if it wobbles too much on impact, then this is also going to cause problems, and this is probably why snooker players like to stick to just one cue, something they like and are used to. And there's probably some way of working out how rigid you want it to be to make the perfect cue. I just think it's interesting that something that's made out of a tree that grows out of the ground is the best piece of technology we've got right now when it comes to making an accurate snooker cue. And in fact, it turns out it works far better than something that sticks out of the ground to mark our northern magnetic pole. But can you actually play snooker with this? But first, let's quickly catch up with David in Newry, Northern Ireland. To start off with, what I thought I'd do is attempt to make a 100 break, just like I had with the cheap cue, but unfortunately I quickly realised this wasn't going to be possible. So then I thought, why not just try to clear the colours? Can you clear the colours with the North Pole? That sounds like a good idea for a video on its own. But that was before I realised how much of a challenge this was going to be. Missing this blue nearly drove me crazy because I'd been trying for two days to clear the colours and the furthest I got was one shot on the pink, which unfortunately I missed. Shortly after this, I had to give up. So there we go, two days of trying to play snooker with the North Pole and my highest break with this thing is 14. This was disappointing, it wasn't that it was impossible to clear the colours, I'd just run out of time. And as I've explained all the way through this video, just because it's a world renowned landmark doesn't mean it's going to be any good. So there we go, the North Pole. Rubbish as a snooker cue, although I do think excellent festive decoration. It puts me in such a good mood, I'm not even going to try and plug my book of trick shots. Now our next video is actually going to be about snooker, so I'm sorry about that, but until then, if you want to know more about snooker cues, then have a look at our cheap cue challenge or find out why this cue has a spring in it. And remember, don't just watch play and make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel and visit the website. See you later and Merry Christmas.